not had a video for a very long time. I understand. A um, few reasons for this. Uh, one is that winter is kicking in at this point and it's not the best time to be building a van in a back lane. So for those who have watched the um, van building series, I'd like to thank you very much for that. And there will be more of them as soon as the springtime kicks in. We'll get a new van. I'm going to get a larger van this time and we'll do another conversion. But in the meantime, um, another thing which I like to do very much is uh, oil painting. And what I've been doing recently is I've been doing a lot of painting and I've also been making frames for the paintings. So what I'd like to do in this video is show you how I make a tray frame for the paintings. Now these are made out of MDF, uh, fairly simple procedure really, and I'll go through the various steps of that now. Now, as I say, I'm making these frames out of MDF and to start with, to put the moulding itself together, we have a strip of MDF which is cut at uh, 8 centimetres or 80 mil and we have another one which is cut at uh, 25 mil. And essentially, we're just going to glue that on there to make an L shape and that's the beginning of the moulding. So I'm just putting a line of glue along this uh, 80 mil strip of MDF, continuous line all the way along. And this is just a PVA wood glue, it's very strong, very good. Having done that, we simply want to put this L shape or dog leg on there. Um, I'm just going to clamp these two together, just making sure that they are flush on the underside. So, need a few clamps to do this. First stage, very simple. That's um, glued up now. We'll let that go off and then we'll see what we've got. I normally do a few of these at a time. This is one that I did earlier, so to speak. Um, and that's how it ends up, essentially. Um, it's like an L shape, like this. This will give the painting a nice border and uh, that sort of gallery uh, tray frame sort of effect. When it's finished. So the next thing to do with this is to give it a coat of paint. I like to give it just a, an initial coat before cutting it to size and then we'll sand that down, get it all ready and then we'll start looking at making the mitres on this. So we're going to put the first coat of paint on and just as I'm doing this I'll tell you the um, this makes for a very inexpensive frame. Uh, it's a very good frame but it's very inexpensive. Um, I think out of a sheet of MDF, a full sheet of, uh, as I say, 12 mil MDF, I think I get 10 of these, 10 of these uh, full strips, which are 2 meters 40 long, um, 10 of those out of one sheet of MDF. Now the sheet of MDF cost me, I think, 32 pounds, something like that. So this whole piece of molding, which is, as I say, 2.4 meters long, cost each each strip of it, each piece of it, cost about three pounds, um, which is fairly inexpensive uh, for picture framing. Picture framing can be an expensive business. Obviously, I don't know that they use MDF, they may use a different wood. Uh, but because I do a lot of painting and I have a lot of paintings to frame, um, I wanted to keep the costs down as much as I could. And fortunately, I have this workshop and space, and I'm able to do this sort of stuff. So, as I say, first things, we just want to get a coat of paint on there. This will seal it, and um, then we'll sand all of this down before we start actually making the frame itself. But first of all, good thick coat of paint. I find this, it's not really what you would call end grain, but this section of the MDF, the, this, uh, the flat surface is fairly smooth, but as soon as this gets a little paint on it this way, that'll sort of like a grain rise, you know? So um, this will want sanding down quite heavily to get it nice and smooth. Okay, so we've got three of them done now. They've all had the first coat of paint. We're going to let them dry and then get on to the next stage. Okay, so these are all dry now, so our next thing is to give them a sand down. I've just got a 120 grit paper here, and I'm just going to sand this down, taking 
roughness where the sort of grain is raised a little bit. That's the size yet. Okay, so I have the three of those pieces of moulding um, sanded down at this point. Also, you may notice a door has arrived in the workshop. Nothing to do with the picture framing. Uh, I'm just cutting that size for a friend. So, on with the picture framing. We'll have the mouldings ready to go. I know that the painting in which I wish to frame is 80 centimetres by 53 centimetres. So now we're going to work out how big we want to cut these mouldings. So the moulding itself finishes um, about 9.5 centimetres wide with the uh, with the dog leg on this with this edging on. And as I say, the painting is 80 by 53. So we're going to have the moulding itself is going to be eight centimetres all the way around, and this will leave us enough room to attach the painting to the moulding. Um, that's correct, yes. So we want the moulding to be 16 centimetres larger than the painting. And the painting is 80, so that's going to be 96. And this one will take a bit of working out. Maths was never the strongest subject. Uh, but we're adding 16 to that. So that's 69. We're going to cut them on the uh, mitre saw. And just before we do that, I'm going to see if I can get pretty much an exact 90 degrees, um, sorry, 45 degrees set up here. It says it's 45 degrees on the turntable, but there's always a little bit of movement. And even if you're half a degree out, uh, by the time you've done four of them, you're two degrees out. So it needs to be as precise as possible. Make sure the thing's not plugged in before doing this. And what I'm going to do is use that uh, mitre square there and I'm just going to see if that blade like that runs clean along the 45 degrees and that does look okay having said that no that's good the blade's just trailing on there all the way up uh, so I think we're good to go make sure that's tight and we can start on the first cut we just want to square or take the edge off this first length here and then we'll need to flip that over to cut it the other way and what we want to do because this won't sit flat in the saw we'll just put this piece of packing underneath it 96 centimeters so this is why one would always measure twice and make absolutely sure 96 that's going to there Now, steady that up, that's going to cut there, yeah, okay, second cut. Now, we're going to have to make this corner the right way again so we'll take another little cut off there and then if we flip that over again put the packing back in And we want this one to be exactly the same size as this one. I found the best way to do that is if we just lay them on top of each other. Make sure that what ends at this end are flush. And bring that along. And slide it in place. Right there.
Okay, now we're going to do exactly the same with this piece. And this piece, I believe, is 69. So, same procedure. Okay, so we've got our four pieces here. Uh, two at 96 and two at 69. And the rain's really coming down here. I don't know if you can hear it on the roof. Now, I'm going to take these upstairs and glue them together. Um, just because the workshop is getting a little bit... Uh, cramped down here and I'll be able to do that better up in the studio so very next thing take them upstairs glue them together okay so I brought these things up into the studio to glue up we've got a nice big table here which we can use the lighting in here isn't the best right now but we'll struggle on and um, to do this what we've got is this uh, band clamp um, we've got some smaller clamps and some wood glue so what I'll do, I'll set the camera up over here and then we'll see if we can get it lit a little bit better. Okay, so with these pieces, I'm just going to lay them out here to begin with. And we want to get the clamp, the band clamp, um, roughly into position before we glue any of this up. Right, so that's roughly in position. Now, uh, we'll take this and just stick this on the corners. Now, this just fits. That's fine like that, actually. So, we can put a little bit of tightness on that, just a touch. And now, essentially, what we're going to do is just glue these corners, uh, straighten it all up, and tighten it up here. So, but another thing, uh, just before we do that, I'm going to put some paper under here because the glue will inevitably ooze out, and we don't want to stick the frame to the table. Okay, looking good. So, we're going to take this piece. And put plenty of glue on here. And plenty of glue on there. And then we can put that one in place. Like so. And do the same with this one. So that's there now if we just Take a look at each of the corners and make sure that they're aligned and all good. Then we can start tightening this clamp up. And this will pull it all into itself. Just want to make sure everything's in alignment. Oops. That's good. Yeah, a little bit discrepancy there, but we can still work with this, it's not too tight yet. Okay, that's all looking good. Now, a little bit more pressure on the clamp at this point. And then I'm going to take an old cloth and just get rid of any of that excess glue on the face of it. To get the very corners of this clean, uh, otherwise it'll be pretty difficult to sand later. What I found is I'm just using a palette knife here, a square edge palette knife, uh, to go right into each of the corners and pick up any excess glue that we didn't get with the cloth. Okay, and now to make sure that it's flush this way and that it dries flush that way, I'm going to put these clamps on down that way. And this will just pull the two boards together uh, and make them flush. There. Now you can see a line here, obviously that's just a cutting line. Um, if it does need a little bit of filling, then we can use some filler. And once we've got a good thick coat of paint on there, this should look like nice mitres. 
Okay, so that's the story so far. We've got these four uh, corners clamped up with the sash clamp pulling them together this way and with these clamps putting them together that way. So that just needs to dry um, and it should be fine. I've got some, um, just arrived today actually, some wire and some little D-rings to put on the back to hang it with. Um, but we'll let that dry. Then if we need to do any filling, we'll do the filling and then we'll give it another coat of paint and we're almost there. Okay, so this has had <clears throat> overnight to dry and should be fine at this point. We'll just take this clamp off and we'll take a look. Okay. Right, there we go. So that's come along very nicely. There's a little bit of filling to do on these just to smarten them up before we put the last coat of paint on. So I've got some ready-made filler here and I'm just going to go around it and see if there's any little discrepancies which need to be taken care of. We'll let that dry then sand it all down. We're going to back down the workshop at this point and still waiting for the filler to dry a little but what we do need here are some holes drilling in this close to the edge so that when we put the painting into the frame we can attach it through the back of the frame. So I'm going to drill a few holes here. We know that we've got a centimetre, about a centimetre and a half uh, overhang here from the actual size of the painting. So just very close to the edge. So I'm going to have a few holes. So the filler has now dried. I've sanded all these corners down. And the next thing to do with this is give it a final coat of paint. Well, I'll give it a coat of paint, let it dry, see if it needs another one after that. But that's what we're going to do right now. Now this is, um, in fact, a quick drying chalky furniture paint. And on the insides here, we'll just coat them up and we'll let that dry a touch and then probably go back over the corners just to make sure that they look good. Alrighty, I think the frame is dry at this point. Um, all looking good, nice and smooth. Corners have um, worked out very well. The only thing left to do with this is put some uh, D-rings on the back and then put a wire across so it's ready for hanging. Now, let's get some light. The light these days is terrible. <laughs> you don't get much of it. But I bought this little kit of stuff from um, Amazon, I think it was. I got it and get them on eBay, Amazon, wherever. Where you've got some framing wire, these little D rings to put underneath. Um, screws come with it, and these little sleeves to nip the wire together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put them on, and then we're ready to get the painting in there. Okay, so we'll assign this to be the top of the frame. Doesn't really matter which way we'll go with that, but. We'll take it as that and I'm going to go 15 centimeters down, make a mark, same on the other side, 15 centimeters, and then we want the first D ring, we'll just put the bottom of that on the 15 centimeter mark and put one of these screws through it. Ah. Not so bad. Okay, that one's in hasn't come through, it's always a plus point. And do the same on the next. And I see we have the wire, which I'm gonna double um, on this. Let's make sure we get any kinks out of it. And that's gonna go through that ring. It does kink fairly easily, that's okay. And put the other side through this one. There. I've twisted it round here and then I've put a sleeve over the twist. And now I'm just going to nip that with some crimps or a pair of pliers to make sure that it's nice and secure. Okay, so we've got this back in the studio now. I've chosen a painting to put in it. And this painting is um, of a Scottish beach. Um, it's the view to Harris, actually. This is the Isle of Harris in the background here. And we're going to see what this looks like in this frame. 
I'm just trying to place it centrally ish just to come that way a bit this paint was quite dry I did it several weeks ago um, now we want to square that up and the way we'll do that is just by measuring each corner of it it wants to be about eight centimeters I believe Okay, this is good. So now we have eight centimeter border all the way around this, and we want to attach the painting to the frame. And we're going to screw it from the underside. Have some screws here, which will go through the board and into the painting, but not through the painting. Obviously, you would have to measure uh, what depth your board is, what depth your uh, molding is, and then use an appropriate type of screw for that. So to do that, I'm just going to pull this over the side of the table and I should be able to get the screw in from the underneath side. And we'll see how that goes. Put a little pressure on That's one. I'll get another one in there. I'll just check to make sure that we're absolutely square with this. So there's the finished thing. Um, <clears throat> I think all of those miters are looking quite good. The frame itself is looking very smart and it holds that painting very well, I think. As I say, this is the um, an oil painting of a beach, a Scottish beach, uh, to the, with the view to the Isle of Harris and a bit of a stormy sky over it. Uh, but there's the frame, that's how I make these frames. I hope if you are looking at doing something like this yourself, I hope that the video has been useful. Uh, not that difficult to make, certainly worth having a go. And I think it sets the painting off very nicely. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. Um, and also do consider subscribing to the channel. It does help the channel a lot. Over the next few videos, we're probably gonna do some more painting. As I say, it's a little bit late in the year to do the um, van conversions at this point. So we'll move on to the next thing, I think, and this will be oil painting. There's oil paintings all over the place here. Uh, but over the next few weeks, I'll see if I can do some time lapses, um, show you how I actually paint. Um, looking at the palette, looking at various things like that. So if this sort of thing is going to interest you, as I say, do consider subscribing to the channel. And I thank you very much for watching.